G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen, and welcome back to another video. Here we are and at a Suzuka, at Suzuka Circuit, in Japan, in Group 3 cars. So, as characteristic of the time, I'm in the Audi R8 around Suzuka here, and you can see this is a qualifying lap at the moment, but you can have a look at that while I discuss the combination. So, Suzuka Circuit is a Japanese circuit, it's on the Formula 1 calendar, so it's a very famous track, very long track as well for, uh, I guess, racetrack standards anyway. 5.8 kilometers, so it's an over 2 minute lap in Group 3 cars, I think the very best players can get it done in under 2 minutes, but we stick with an over 2 minute lap time at the moment. It's got 18 turns, uh, it was built in 1962, the current sort of variation was introduced in 2003, used up to present day. It has a longest straight of 1.2 kilometers exactly, and a 40 meter elevation difference. So that, of course, is 40 meters between the lowest point of the track to the highest point of the track. It is a figure eight combination, so very interesting. There's a crossover, of course, crossover not on the same plane. There's a tunnel on the lower portion and a bridge on the upper portion to complete said crossover as we go through turns 13 and 14 now. So Suzuka, it's a very technical circuit as you can see. It's got S section, long straight section, fast, fast corners and slow hairpins. Uh, let me just pause for a second there. Getting comfortable in real life, obviously, when I was completing the lap here, but we continue on. So we're 6 tenths up in 202.0, which was a previous fastest lap at the point in time. Uh, that is the very, very treacherous 130R turn 15. If you break down towards the Casio Triangle, the final chicane, you can absolutely murder the curbs. We put almost the whole car up onto the curb there. And you can see we actually gain out up to 7 tenths ahead on a 202.0. We cross the line, it's going to be a 201.2, which really isn't too bad. It's, of course, not the best. It's probably... Or rather, it's probably on the quick side of average. A201 there. Um, I should also add, it's not reversible. You can't race in the opposite direction. It does have a shorter variation called Suzuka Circuit East Course, and that is just the snake section at the start of the track, and it loops. Uh, there's a join in the track that joins back to the track after Casio Triangle, but that is very short track and really not relevant today to today's racing. So here we are in seventh place. Now, spoiler alert, skip ahead if you don't like spoilers, it is going to be a lot like my performance at Red Bull Ring a few months ago. So, uh, take that as you will. It's only a 14 minute video, so let's see what is left in. So we begin the first race we have around here in seventh position behind a VW Beetle, v Villa, Villa, Gen, Villingen's. 14, a New Zealand player. Uh, <laughs> very strange pronunciation of names, or a very strange name leading to strange pronunciation anyway. But this is the snake section now. So there's a Honda up ahead of the New Zealander there, and he actually looks on the back foot a bit, so I wonder if that Beetle is going to be able to make its way past the Honda there. But the snake section is very, very technical, and it is very, very heavily dependent on the line you take through there. So, you really got to get your line correct to get the fastest possible time. You can see we've got a BMW Z4 on our tail there as we go through the first Degna, and then we go into Degna 2 now, the slower one of the two. And you can see that BMW Z4 is right on my tail going through there, but we managed to get a better exit than him and streak out five tenths, as opposed to the pretty much less than a tenth that was. The hairpins, those corner on the track, we accelerate out of there nicely using all the available track and then some as we stick into the slipstream of the Beetle, now coming towards, uh, what is it, Spoon Curve, of course, named because of its shape, obviously. Um, we go through Spoon Curve, it's third gear around turn 13, and then turn 14, the second part of Spoon, there's a little bit of contact between the Beetle and the Honda. Honda is shepherded wide, and I've managed to follow the Beetle through now, of course, I'm allowed to do that, but the Beetle shouldn't, as he slows up and lets him back through. So that's good sportsmanship there, but I, of course, don't let the Honda back through, as that move wasn't my fault. But I do let him back through there, it's going side by side into 130R, isn't 
a good recipe, and you can see it's resulted in a bad result, a one second penalty, little bit of contact, Honda goes off the track as we go through there as well, and yeah, so that's what I'm talking about, I tried to back out of that and didn't really notice there was someone directly behind the Honda, as my uh, goal was to let the Honda back past me and slot in behind the Honda just before 130R, but it resulted in a bit of contact and someone left the track after touching me, hence a one second penalty. So that is lap one of four, of course, uh, four lap race, two minutes each, it is four times two, which is eight. You can also watch me for some very handy maths tips as well. So we're going to go through the snake section now, turns three through six, uh, before we get to the very long turn seven Dunlop. Uh, the Honda actually goes a little bit wide going through turn six there, reverse bank, as we go through Dunlop turn seven. Uh, I think it's also turn seven and turn eight as we go through here now, but I haven't got that written down on my paper here. But let's see if we can get up any more positions before the end of this lap at least, or before the end of the race at the very least. But this Honda is sort of, he's driving quickly, but he's a bit all over the place. So let's hope that results in a mistake from him, or that's not any malicious in any way or sinister from me, but that's just what racing is. You do sort of wait for mistakes of opponents there, but nevertheless, we continue on towards Spoon Curve. Now this leads out towards the long back stretch before 130R as we go a little bit wide. Now that green AstroTurf, absolutely zero grip. So if you get on that AstroTurf, your best port of call is to just drive off the track and then square off and come back on like, sort of perpendicular because you don't want to come on barely diagonal, you'll have no grip on there. But we serve the one second penalty and I'm down in eighth position. So this is really a repeat of Red Bull, but we go through one uh, we go through the hairpin now, the super upper head, he just gets on the power a bit early and bins it into the wall, ends up facing the wrong way. <laughs> that was just pure racing error from him. But you can see coming through the 130R, you can see the AMG goes on the AstroTurf, loses a lot of speed, coming into the final chicane of the corner, Audi head goes deeper, goes through the Porsche, you can see there's almost a collision between the Audi and the AMG, the AMG gets a little bit loose in the exit, I'm going to be able to capitalise on that, the answer is no, as I didn't quite have my car as settled as I would like, but nevertheless that's two positions in the final chicane of the final lap, and that my friends, is the importance of finishing, so <laughs> once you get a penalty, don't quit, that's the absolute worst thing you can do, it absolutely tanks your ratings, and you can see that we actually gained a few positions in the final chicane. So, you never know what will happen at the end of the race, that's why you never quit a race. Always finish the race. But, that is where we leave that particular race and we move on to the next one. So, my 201.2 puts me in third position this time. Of course, a load of BS and a little bit of CS in this lobby as we speak, but uh, that is okay. It's not a bad place to be. S rated SR is always where you want to be, but we start that race now. In third position, go down the front straight. Let's see if we can all get through turn one and two without too much argy bargy as we trail break through the first part. Uh, get on the power a little bit too much, but it's not to worry as we managed to set ourselves into turn two nicely. Super is a little bit slow through the apex, he was just a touch wide. There was almost a car width on the inside, but we get through there uh, not with not too much contact at all. But I get a little bit loose coming through the same point of the lap in lap two and we manage to bin it into the infield. But that of course is not the worst place to be. Um, the worst place to be on that corner is on the complete outside if you get sucked off on the exit of turn one into turn two. But we go a little bit wide going through turn four there and you can just see the Porsche comes through with a very opportunistic move. A very good move my friend by De Legend 352 and you know, I'll, I'll happily be on the bad end of that overtake if it is a good one like that. But we skip ahead coming into 130R and you can see the Porsche goes through and just gets the AstroTurf on the outside. You can see he goes right off and then comes back on. That's the best thing to do in that particular situation. But he goes deep into the first part of Casio Triangle. And as he's coming back on, I'm going around the second part and he collides into me and pushes me into the gravel trap. And that traps me in said gravel uh, on the exit of Casio Triangle. Oh... That is really poor, sort of, a poor showing for Gran Turismo there, as he does slow up for me, so that's 
a good bit of sportsmanship there. Thank you very much, The Legend 352 but he should have really been ghosted out. That is what we have a ghosting system for, but I guess I could have backed off a bit, but it's not my fault he went deep, so I bins it on the exit of turn two. But we skip ahead to the final uh, part of the lap, and we translate that into a fifth place, 10.9 seconds behind the leader. But oh, that's really unfortunate for me. Just on the bad end of a bad event there into Casio Triangle. So <laughs> let's see if we can have another. Let's see if we can have another race leading into a good result. So we start the final race now. So my 201 puts me. Let's see. Oh god, there's a bit of suspense there. Seventh on the grid, and we've got a 650s in second place. It's really a rather distinctly average car in Group 3. No one really uses it. It's really not a very fast car at all, but I guess it's not too bad if you know how to drive it. But we come through the final corner now to begin the lap. Nothing really happens at the beginning of lap 1 there, but we go through Spoon Curve. Someone bins it off. goes way off in Spoon Curve, and we manage to make up a position into 6th place. Now, coming down towards the first corner of lap 2, we're behind the Lexus here. Let's see if we're going to go for the move. We are. We look up the inside. Is it going to be enough? We know. We just back off. Going through turn 1 side by side really isn't a good idea at all. But we go through turn 2 now, a little bit loose. Try and get on the power, and we get through there nicely, actually. We round the car out through turn 2 nicely. So we go through the snake section now. Let's see. Got to really keep your car in check through these, this sequence of corners here as we go through turn 5 now into turn 6. Um, let's see if we can get past this Lexus before the end of the lap. So we get through there, not too badly actually, get a nice line through Dunlop cu curve actually, so that's quite that, that's quite good for um, the end of the snake section now, but you can see the Lexus bends it off into the gravel on the exit of Degna 1 and gets a very bad line through Degna 2, and you can see I make my way way past as he drops down a few positions there. Yellow flags around as we skip ahead going through Snake of lap 3. Uh, someone's off the track, yes, it's another reality. We managed to make our way past him into 4th position now. And then we're going to come through D Degna 2 um, of lap 3. We just lose on the AstroTurf just a little bit. Is it going to be enough to let the guy in 5th pass? I don't think it is. We break down towards the hairpin. He's on the inside. No, he bins it off onto her. <laughs> as he breaks, he touches the inside grass and goes off the track. Touches me on the way off, I was really worried about a penalty in that particular situation, but I don't think it results in one for me, although I did see one a little further back. But coming towards 1.30R of the final lap, you can see I just touched the Astro Turf, but I managed to keep the car in check nicely, going through the final chicane, slide it through the first part, a little bit wide through the second part, but not to worry, we're going through turn 18 now, there's a penalty up ahead, and we get a little bit of oversteer on the exit now, that leads the Lexus into contention now, is it going to be enough for him to overtake me to the line? It's not, and I do manage to keep 4th place by like point zero. what was it, point? Zero three of a second or something. Oh man, that was pretty close. There, uh, from the between me and the GoPro Lexus there. But I'm gonna leave it there at that race. I think I really wasn't able to have a good run around here as it was just, um, just really the same. <laughs> a repeat of me at Red Bull Ring a few months ago. But you can see I had number 14 in my car and finished fourth, and I went up three positions. So once again, another sort of importance of finishing, sort of uh, importance of finishing clip there. You can just see, no matter how bad your race is going, always finish. We've got a bit of a bonus clip, so we just see this is a completely different race. You didn't see this coming through a uh, spoon. Beetle just loses it on the AstroTurf a bit. I try to go up the inside, but he just rounds out the corner. I end up going off the track, and I'm on the grass, and as I'm coming back on, I hit the Mazda. He smashes into the Beetle on the way back on. Beetle comes back on, smashes me back onto the track, and then I get rear-ended by another car and spin it right around. End up facing the wrong direction. Porsche makes his way past, trying to get it going, but I'm on the grass, and I'm in stone dead last. Oh, I actually wasn't really going to leave this in the video, but <laughs> I thought I would show you just honestly the worst racing incident I've ever seen or ever been a part of and of course I was on the worst end of that particular racing incident so guess what I actually did finish that race guess where I finished I finished in 17 so uh, that's really a very bad sort of clip I thought I'd leave it in there with a little bit of humor to round out the video hopefully 
I bring enough of that, or at least enough entertainment for you. But that is the end of me at Suzuka this time around, and that is where I'm going to leave the video today. So I do thank you for getting this far into the video. It means a lot to me that people do like to get to the end of my videos and watch all of them. But do let me know you liked by hitting that like button, and I do urge you to subscribe if you really like to see more. But that is the end of the video today, and that means that is it from me. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. See you later.